What is up, TSFL Nation? I'm back with another reaction. This is a uh, Mike um, Kozamba um, video, and this is Will the Markel Folks trade make create a 76ers dynasty? <clears throat> I mean, they got potential to get up there. They need a couple more players. I would get some bench players and probably probably a veteran to get in there. But the 76ers look impressive. If they can keep this core together, then they could do something. Plus, Ben Simmons is a rookie this year, so who knows how he'll turn out. But let's just check it out. Welcome to the first crazy trade in what I hope is a summer of NBA craziness. Because right now, guys, I'm filming this on Sunday, but on Monday, the deal is supposed to be officially finalized. I was about to skip right to the trade screen, but, um... Why is my game broken? Number of fouls required before a player fouls out to six? That is the current rule. Anyway, guys, here we are. This is the number three pick and the Lakers first round pick, though that does have a protection of one and then six and on for the number one pick in the draft for Markel Fultz. Also, if this Lakers pick does end up being one or six and beyond, the Celtics are instead going to get the 2019 Kings pick. So if that ends up happening, then I'll change it as we go along. I couldn't add the protection here. And as we see, even in 2K's world, even if we don't add any protection to that Lakers pick, if they don't want the trade, it ended up being declined. But tough luck, this is what we're working with. And yeah, I mean, I'm not too surprised it's declined because the reaction so far from this trade has been that the 76ers have won this deal. A lot of Celtics fans are not happy with this trade at all. And we'll get into that in a little bit for now. Well, they did it because the they want to get Jimmy Butler. New savior with Joel Embiid and with Ben Simmons. We got 13 trade offers. Let's just check them out to see the value here. You got Kevin Love, Mike Conley, number five pick, and God, Buddy Heels. CJ McCollum? Okay. People want the pick, but of course, we're not going to give it to him. We are taking Markel Fultz, and we're going to see if Markel Fultz, Dario Sarge, Ben Simmons, and Joel Embiid can turn the 76ers into a championship contender. I mean, I got to say, if I was a Sixers fan, I would be hyped right now. Right, yeah. now we see how the draft plays out in 2K. This is just absurd. Josh Jackson goes number eight to the Knicks. Congrats, Knicks fans. You made it. <laughs> Finally, something goes right for you. And Lonzo goes to the Celtics, which I guess we'll just talk about right now. I was going to talk about That's that not at some happen. point. So, yeah, everyone right now has the Celtics taking Josh Jackson. Or they think that maybe the Celtics are targeting Jimmy Butler and stacking up picks to get him. Yeah. I'm not sure about all that. We'll get into that more, I guess, as we go on. But wouldn't it be interesting if the Los Angeles Lakers, who we've been hearing, are not 100% sold on Lonzo Ball? Wouldn't it be crazy wow. if the Lakers end up taking Josh Jackson and the Celtics end up with Lonzo Ball? And then Lonzo <laughs> Ball becomes a better player than Markel Fultz. I mean, that would be insane and that's the kind of stuff that is possible. It's also yeah. possible that Josh Jackson could become a better player than Mark Elfolds. We're not going to sign any free agents because we're just going to let this ride out for year one. For year two, things might be different. So I don't want to get too into like winners or losers of this trade, especially when in a few days the Celtics could be making more moves. But yeah. I don't know, guy. I just don't understand. Joel Embiid, a nice 87 overall. Let's go. Anyway, I just don't understand how you give up Mark Elfolds unless there's some kind of plan in place. Here. Like if they're targeting Jimmy, if they're targeting someone else, then okay. A lot of Celtics yeah. fans wouldn't even be happy with that. They wouldn't even be happy if the Celtics were trading for Jimmy Butler because they think that just means they'll be Eastern Conference runners up for the foreseeable future. But regardless, if they're doing something like that, then okay. But I just don't understand how you give up the number one pick here. Basically, every single scout in this draft a draft that has been seen as one of the most talented drafts in a while. All of those scouts have said that Markel Fultz is number one unquestionably. Not all of them, 90% of them. And you see our lineup looking pretty solid. But yeah, when is the last time that we've seen a surefire prospect that's a guard actually fake? It happens all the time with big men. It happens with forwards sometimes, like Adam Morrison. But hyped up yeah. point guards and shooting guards that go number one, when do they fail? Like, let's just look at every single draft. So, looking at just guards, we've got Kyrie, who's an all-star. Mm -hmm. John Wall, who's an all-star. Derrick Rose, who was the youngest MVP ever before... Denny Horrible Andrew. things happen to him. Let's just keep moving on. <laughs> Allen Iverson, Hall of Famer. There aren't that many point guard or shooting guards that go number one. In fact, these guys are all mostly point guards. So yeah, point is that when a guy is touted as being the number one overall pick and he's a point guard, that generally means he's going to be an all-star at the very worst. And just looking at those all-stars, we got Allen Iverson, MVP Derrick Rose, Kyrie Irving, John Wall. He's going to be in some really good company. 
start yep. the season. Let's see how we do. Trust the process, baby. But also, Lost Martel Fultz is one of the only two players in this draft Lost. class graded as a one. top number one tier prospect by all of the scouts and GMs across the league. The top tier number one prospects are potential superstars. And just looking at the history of this, the top tier prospects have generally been very, very good players at the very least. They started this in 2009, and since then, only Blake Griffin, John Wall, Anthony Davis, Andrew Wiggins, Joel Embiid, and Jabari Parker have been ranked in the top tier prospects. So, mm. pretty good company. And I gotta yeah. say, this is a huge risk, especially for Danny Ainge. If Markel Fultz ends up becoming a 10-time All-Star, if he becomes an MVP, an All-NBA First Team selection for a ton of years, Danny Ainge is going to look like an idiot. And yep. we're going to remember that. We're going to remember Danny Ainge for not just taking the surefire top pick and instead trading him for a lot of uncertainty. I mean, if the plan is to take Josh Jackson, then that's great. Josh Jackson, again, could be better than Markel Fultz. We really don't know. We don't know until these guys have been playing for three plus years. But yeah. Josh Jackson does have one huge flaw, and that's his jump shot. And in the modern NBA, that's a big flaw. Not everyone's able to just get a jump shot. We've seen tons of players, most notably Justice Winslow, come into the draft, and they've been defensive studs that are also very athletic. And people have said if they could just get a jump shot, they're going to be very special. Last time I checked, Justice Winslow still doesn't have a jump shot. Yeah. Neither does Michael Carter Williams. Yeah. Neither does Alfred Payton. Sometimes yeah. you just can't fix these guys' shots. Not everyone is Kawhi Leonard. Looking at us, 28 and 28, do we have a shot at the playoffs? Yes, we do. We're currently the eight seed. Rookie of the year, Markel Fultz putting up some numbers, baby. Josh Jackson, number two, though. Markel Fultz, all-star. Let's go. All right, so if really? this happened, then... Wow. Wow. People would be questioning the Celtics basically right away. <laughs> and from what I've been reading, the Celtics weren't all in on Markel Fultz, especially because they weren't very impressed with his workout, which, you know, is whatever. Like, Lonzo yeah. Ball's not going to have the best workout either. There are some guys that are just way better at playing five-on-five -five basketball as opposed to an individual one-on-one -on -one workout. And we've seen that Markel Fultz is very good at five-on-five -five basketball. Now, yes, mm. his team did win eight or nine games or whatever this yeah. year, but his team was also horrible, so bad that his coach got fired even though they were getting the number one pro high school ranked recruit. Yeah. They were getting the number one senior in the high school class this year. And instead, Washington lost Michael Porter because they thought it was that important to fire their coach. So I'm going to just give yeah. Markel Fultz the benefit of the doubt here. I mean, Ben Simmons also just... I mean, we've seen guys like Paul George go, I think, 15 and 18 in his last season in Fresno State. And he's doing just fine. As for us, we saw Markel was Rookie of the Year. And we are the five seed already wow. playing the Celtics in the first round. This would be the greatest first round playoff series of all time. That's probably an overreaction, but it would be <laughs> really... It'd just be fitting it'd just be amazing the storylines would be incredible we can't pull it out though they guess what we're nothing sweet yep. not too surprised this was year one of this rebuild we're going another season we're gonna make a run at the finals next year i'm telling you rockets NBA rockets it's interesting all right let's do mm. the draft lottery let's make sure the league isn't doing anything stupid okay whatever draft lottery Let's see where that Lakers pick falls. The Lakers pick is number 11. So that means that I'm getting that Lakers pick back, and instead I have to give them the Sacramento Kings pick. Now, this is definitely an interesting wrinkle in this whole trade. I mean, on the one hand, you know, you're hoping, I guess, that you get the Lakers' second to fifth pick next year, but the Lakers could win 30-plus games next year. They could be out of that top five range. I think that's very possible. So then you end up getting this Kings pick, and again... You don't know what the Kings are going to be in two seasons. I mean, in two seasons in the NBA, everything could change. Buddy Heel started to look pretty good this year. On top of that, the Kings are adding the fifth and tenth pick this year. I said that like I was unsure because I'm unsure. Yeah, the Kings are adding the fifth and tenth pick. So, huh. in two but seasons, again, they could be, still I'm not going to say they're going to be in the playoffs, stuff, but they could so. be the tenth or eleventh worst team in the NBA. So, then you end up trading Markel Fultz for the number three pick this year and, like, the number eleventh pick. It doesn't seem like you're getting enough value out of trading away the one person on the draft that almost every scout and every GM has at the top of their big board. And I know a lot of people are going to give Danny Ainge the benefit of the doubt here, and he has done some great things, so we probably yeah. should. But I would like to point out that Danny Ainge and Brad Stevens wanted to trade away, like, 
four or five picks to end up landing Justice Winslow just two drafts ago. And as mm. we've seen from Justice Winslow, he has been nothing but a bust so far. This year yeah. he shot something like 35% from the field, and I don't think it's a surprise that the Miami Heat went on that giant run after he was injured. It's just hard to play with guys in the modern NBA that can't shoot, can't spread the floor, especially at the two or the three. And right yeah. now, that's what Josh Jackson is. So again, we'll see. It's also very possible that the Celtics aren't even targeting Josh Jackson, especially because the Celtics have not had Josh Jackson or Alonzo Ball work out for them right now, which to me is just interesting. We're going to take yeah. Isaac Bonga with our pick, but yeah, so I mean, just the whole fact that the Celtics have not worked out Josh Jackson or Alonzo Ball, I think some people think that means that they're going to be drafting Jason Tatum with the third pick. I don't think that's the case. Mm. I mean, maybe it is. Who really knows? We're also getting this Bruce Brown guy this late. Okay. Getting draft steals out here, baby. But, I mean, I don't know if they're going for Tatum. He's not ranked that highly on anyone else's board. So if they're not going for Josh Jackson or Lonzo Ball, because they haven't worked either of them now, and maybe they still are going for them, I just think it's weird to trade away Markel Fultz when you haven't even worked out the player you plan on taking. Grayson yeah. Allen, welcome to the team. Oh, Hi. boy. All right, but if they're not planning on drafting either of those guys, then yes, yeah, he's going to be some doing some I've seen some talks about stuff. them planning on trading for Anthony Davis. That's just not going to happen. No. The Pelicans are not trading Anthony Davis. He's under contract until like 2020. No reason to panic and trade him. They also just got DeMarcus Cousins to exactly. pair with Anthony Davis to win now. They're definitely going to give that at least one full season to see how it goes. So they're not getting Anthony Davis. I've also seen Kristaps Porzingis' name being thrown out there. That's Knicks are not gonna be and the fact that they're not drafting Markel Fultz means that they're probably now going all in on Isaiah Thomas. Because a lot of people thought the Celtics were not going to... A 27-year-old rookie? Anyway, a lot of people thought <laughs> the Celtics were not going to re-sign Isaiah and that Markel Fultz was going to be their point guard of the future. That's not happening now. So if they're committing to Isaiah, then maybe they're going to be using this third pick and the other pick to, again, trade for someone like Jimmy. Maybe they talked to the Bulls and the Bulls we'll were see. like, we want tons of picks, not just one number one. Pick. And as you guys know, I'm a Bulls fan that thinks we need to trade Jimmy. I don't think we'll ever win with him. I love Jimmy, but his prime just does not line up with our championship window. Not that we have a championship window at all, but <laughs> rebuilding at least gives us a chance to have one. Right, yeah. So we're just going to let Joel Embiid um, do his thing for agency. We'll match whatever contract happens. All right. So in this world, we've now got DeMarcus Cousins, Paul George. We've got some interesting free agents. We've got the cap space. We're just going to offer them both. And now, boys, we are going to say our prayers and uh, sending offers still. No, Cousins gone. All right, Cousins and Paul George gone. Whatever. Let's look at Robert Covington. We don't want to lose him now. I have the only offer to him. Joel Embiid. The Nets almost got him. Sorry, Joel. Actually, sorry, Brooklyn. Nothing will ever go right for you. Also, I haven't <laughs> mentioned this yet, but yes, in this scenario, we are doing no injuries. And that's going to be huge. Look at what Melo wants. Good luck, man. 34-year-old Melo. Good luck. But yeah, no injuries is huge for this, obviously. That's going to be huge for the 76ers' future. I mean, if Joel Embiid is still injured, Ben Simmons has and played a single game in the NBA. We have no idea how good he is. But yeah. if Simmons is the real deal, I mean, let's be honest, he's a six foot ten point guard type player like Giannis. So I guess we should expect him to be pretty good. And if yeah. Joel Embiid can stay on the court, if he can stay healthy, then these 76ers are going to be dangerous, man. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that. Markel Fultz gains four points. We're killing it. All right, so going into this season, what we're going to want is I'm going to try to trade for a shooting guard and make a run at the playoffs. We'll make a run at a deeper playoff run because our boys already made the playoffs, as we know. But yeah, in two years, again, if Embiid's healthy, if Simmons is the real deal, this team's going to be making noise. I got to say, Sam Hinkie, you did it, man. Trust the process for real. And right now, Sam Hinkie is a free agent GM. And right now, I want the Bulls to get rid of their GM, their GM duo of Gar Foreman and John Pax. And just a few days ago, Sam Hinkie actually is now able to take other jobs. His non-compete is over. So it's going to be interesting. Hmm. I think especially seeing how the Sixers have done, he's going to end up getting a pretty good job. And he yeah. deserves it. All right. The crazy thing is I could have just got Avery Bradley in free agency. He might be the perfect player for us. We get Gary Harris. All right. We're going to try to get Gary Harris. It looks like we should either be able to get it. All right, so we got Gary Harris for the shooting guard we just drafted, Jaleel Okafor, and this year's first round pick. And we know this year's first round pick is about to be horrible because we're just too good now, baby. Look at this lineup. Markel, Gary, Ben Simmons, Sarge, MB. Now, we don't have a true backup center. We're just going to sign... 
Nene. Just in case. Get over here, Nene. All right, so let's <laughs> do this. Very confident in our team right now. And yeah, I just got to say, I mean, I just hope Danny Ainge knows what he's doing. Because again, man's just gambling with his legacy. Like, he completely wow. fleeced the Nets. Everyone thinks he's a genius. And this is definitely putting that at risk. But if he turns out being right, if he's got another move up his sleeve, if the person he picks ends up being better than Markel Fultz, then yeah, Danny Ainge is going to go down as a legend. Yep. It's just though, like, I understand why Celtics fans are mad because they see all the picks the Celtics are gathering and eventually you have to turn those picks into actual players. Yep. But for now, Danny Ainge just comfortable i guess getting picks it's just weird because i thought markel fultz was you know that he was their safety net he was even if it doesn't work out right now we still have a chance at being a serious title contender for the next 10 years so i'm really interested to see i i wanted to do a main channel video on this but i just can't because the celtics we have no idea what they're doing right now like if they end up trading for jimmy if they end up trading for something someone else then who knows? Maybe they end up coming away this offseason with just a loaded team that could take on LeBron, could compete to make it to the NBA Finals. All right, so our team is doing very well. Currently number two. So we're just wow. going to ride this out. But, yeah, I mean, for all we know, the Celtics are going to walk away from this summer with two new superstars on their team. Maybe they sign Gordon Hayward, and then maybe using the picks they just got, they're able to trade for someone like Jimmy or someone else. If that's the case, then, like, Isaiah, Jimmy Butler, Gordon Hayward, Al Horford, that sounds like a pretty good core. Yeah. That sounds like they're going to at least give the Cavs a bat, especially if, you know, LeBron James goes to the Lakers in a year, which is a whole oh separate gosh, video. She's a part of that, LeBron too. LeBron goes to the Lakers. Things are just going crazy. Luke <laughs> Don Kitch. Kitch. Not quite sure how to say his name yet. I haven't really done a deep dive into him. I know a lot of people are excited on him. Do you guys want to see me do a video on him on the main channel? The guy's supposed to be either the one, two, or three pick next year. Gonna be wow. very interesting. Lonzo Ball, sixth man of the year. Again, Celtics get Lonzo Ball. <laughs> that's very interesting. But for now, as we see, Celtics number four seed, and we're the number two seed. So look at our stats. Markel Fultz wow, cementing himself overall. already as one of the NBA's better point guards. Joel Embiid, just a beast. We already know. I mean, this simulation is anticipating, I guess, that Markel Fultz is going to be amazing and that Joel Embiid's going to continue to be amazing and not get hurt. But you see what Ben Simmons has been doing. I mean, this simulation has basically predicted that Ben Simmons is going to be average or just pretty good. I mean, for all we know, Ben Simmons is going to be the rookie of the year next year. For all we know, he's going to be the second coming of Giannis. He's been hyped as being the next LeBron by a lot of people. And we've seen with Blake, there's been a number one pick before who missed the entire year and then just came out and killed it. So I'm definitely very excited to just watch this 76ers team next year. And I live in New yeah. Jersey. I live really close to Philadelphia. I'm going to be at games, man. It's going to be a very fun young team to watch. And we see the number one seed Wizards eliminated. Does that mm. mean we have a chance at the NBA Finals? Cruz past the Knicks. Of course, we've got the Cavaliers, you know, kind of in our way. I have no idea how the Knicks are a three seed. Whatever. We're going against LeBron. We're going for the NBA. Okay. Nope. Well, that's understandable. Making the Eastern Conference Finals with this team would be just incredible. So, Philly, just good luck. I'm excited. I know that City has not had a good NBA team for a long time now. But yeah. I think that's going to come to an end soon. I think they're going to be very good very soon. All right, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. We do videos like this, do NBA quizzes. We're going to be playing video games at some point. Promise you that. Gonna have vlogs here soon. And if you're already subscribed, you're the man. We know this. And as always, have an awesome day. And cue that. All right, so that was an interesting um, video. The Sixers, they got potential to be very nasty. Um, Embiid needs to stay healthy. Um, ben Simmons needs to um, play um, the way he needs to play it. So this team is, um, they got a lot of potential. But thank you guys for watching. Like the video, like to subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.